For this demo, we're trying to figure out which test tube goes with which reaction. When you look at the three reactions given to you in this demo, the reactants are always a permanganate ion and this HSO3 minus ion every time. Here and here. So how do we know which of these reactions goes with test tube two, three, or four? What you're gonna do is look at the product side. The MnO4 minus two is a product in this first reaction given to us. When we looked at the oxidation states prior to starting the demo, we know that the oxidation state in the permanganate ion over here is a plus six. And it told us that the plus six was green. So we can match up our observations where it turned green and now we know that that's test tube number three, which was done in a basic solution. We go through our process of balancing our reaction, split into half reactions, balance for mass for anything except hydrogen and oxygen, add waters to balance out the oxygen, then add hydrogen ions to balance out those hydrogens that you just added from the water, Add electrons to the more positive side to bring down the charge of the more positive side to match the charge on the other side. Add your half reactions together and you're done. The one thing we have to keep track of with our electrons is when we balance for charge in the top reaction, we end up adding one electron here um, to have that one electron plus this negative charge equal the negative two over here. Whereas in this bottom half reaction, we had to have, um, we had this negative one, uh, negative one, two hydrogen ions. We had to add two electrons to balance out those two hydrogen ions. You can't have two electrons here and only one electron here, so we had to double that top reaction. The other thing going on in this reaction is because it's in a base, you can't just have hydrogen ions floating around in solution. So we basically just pretended that it was an acid for a while. It makes the balancing easier. You have to add hydroxide ions, enough hydroxide ions to basically cancel out and neutralize those hydrogen ions and turn them into water. But at this point of the reaction, it was already balanced for mass and charge. And so if we added two hydroxide ions here, we also have to add two hydroxide ions over here. When we go to add things together, these two hydrogen hydroxide ions that formed two waters, well, there was one water over here when we balanced for mass. And so that one with that two, we ended up with one water heavy on the right-hand side. When we look at the oxidation states, we'll be able to tell a little bit about what's going on charge-wise and electron-wise. A good check to get in a habit to get into is to make sure that your total charge on the left equals the total charge on the right when you're balancing your redox reaction. You're used to balancing for mass. You've been doing that since you were sophomores, but balancing for charge is new. When you look at the oxidation numbers of all the substances involved, hydrogen, no matter where it is in this reaction, is a plus one. Oxygen, no matter where it is, is a minus two. The only substance that's changing are the sulfur, which starts as a plus four and ends as a plus six, and the manganese, which starts as a plus seven, ends as a plus six. If you compare your beginning oxidation state to your ending oxidation state, we know that the sulfur was oxidized because it went from a plus four to a plus six. When you oxidize, you lose electrons. It loses two electrons each, and because there's only one sulfur in our balanced chemical equation, two total. That sulfur is part of the HSO3 minus ion, so we would say the HSO3 is the chemical that is our reducing agent. Our Mn plus seven is the one that's being reduced because when you compare the left side to the right side, 
the oxidation state goes from plus seven to plus six. So it gains one electron each, but because there's a two in our balanced chemical equation, we know that the manganese loses an electron once, or excuse me, gains an electron once and then gains a second one. So manganese is getting reduced and the MnO4 minus is our oxidizing agent. The second reaction, we know that the second reaction given to us goes along with test tube number four, because if you look at the oxidation state of manganese in MnO2, the color associated with this oxidation state was kind of a brownish orange. And when we did test tube number four, this guy was a brownish orange. So we do that process one more time. Balance for mass, for anything but hydrogens and oxygens. Add water to balance the O's. Add hydrogen ions to balance out the H's. Add electrons to the more positive side to bring down the charge to match the charge on the other side of the reaction. Then we have to make sure that our total number of electrons match. Since this guy had three electrons in it, this one had two, we have to double the top and triple the bottom. Cancel out anything that's the same on both sides and add together. Check the overall charge on the left-hand side against the overall charge on the right-hand side to make sure that they match. Now, if we're trying to figure out who's being oxidized and reduced, once again, it's only the, the manganese and the sulfur that are changing oxidation states. The manganese this time goes from a plus seven to a plus four, and the sulfur goes from a plus four to a plus six. So, if sulfur is going from a plus four to a plus six, that means it's losing two electrons. But when we look at our balanced equation this time, there's a big three in front of the HSO3 minus. So that process of losing two electrons happens three times. So it loses six electrons in total. And because that sulfur is part of the HSO3 minus ion, we'd say that that chemical is our reducing agent. The manganese is once again getting reduced because it's gaining electrons. This time, when it goes from plus seven to plus four, it's gaining three electrons. Because there are two manganeses in our balanced chemical equation, that process happens twice for a gain of six electrons total. The MnO4 minus is our oxidizing agent. If you ever end up with these total number of electrons and these total number of electrons don't match, you have not done it correctly. Go back and fix your reaction. The last one. We know that this last one is number two because, well, it's the only one left. And uh, because in this reaction, the Mn plus two is our product, which corresponded to a light pink colorless, kind of looks like a titration almost, color. And we walk through that process one more time, balancing for mass, balancing for charge, making sure the electrons match, adding the half reactions together. When we do that process, always a good idea to check to make sure your overall charge on the left matches the overall charge on the right. One more time, only the manganeses and sulfurs oxidation states are changing. In this reaction, the manganese is going from a plus seven to a plus two, and our sulfur is going from that plus four to a plus six. So our sulfur is once again being oxidized because it's the one losing electrons, it goes from plus four to plus six. But in this balanced equation, there's a five in front of the HSO3 minus, so this happens five times. So we've got a total loss of 10 electrons. Our HSO3 is once again our reducing agent. The manganese ion is being reduced because when you compare the oxidation states left and right, it goes from plus seven to plus two. 
therefore it's gaining electrons, five each. When you look at our balanced chemical equation, there's a two in front of the permanganate. So that process of gaining five electrons happens twice. So 10 electrons are gained in total. And because manganese is part of that MnO4 minus, the MnO4 minus is our oxidizing agent.